This has been a long and painful process on this ZX Spectrum. I have tried so many ways of getting information onto here, including an MP3 tape, which is out of the box. I'll show you that later. And so I've gone for an MP3 tape. I've gone from PC. I've, I've included an amplifier to amplify the output from the PC. And uh, Andrew Beer, Sad Ken, has just told me that apparently there was a design flaw on this. And the ear input is disconnected so that you can't actually get an external audio source. So I'm going to try that because I've really had to give up trying to write tapes. For whatever reason, I just cannot get a tape that will work in this. So what I'm doing, as you can see, is just dismantling it, taking it apart so that we can get in there and make this mod. So the first thing to do, take out your screws, use a magnet or something. If you've got one, don't lose them and then we'll get in there. Just going to undo some of these ribbons. You'll notice when you get in there, you'll have something that looks like that. So we need to undo the tape drive, like so. And then you've got these ribbons for the keyboard. Be a bit ginger with them. You don't want to break them. And then you can remove that. It's a good time, by the way, to inspect your mechanism. Make sure your belt's in good working order. And that, by the way, is the input from the tape head itself there. So you can probably modify stuff here, but we don't need to do that because it has a headphone socket right here and it's not connected as it's supposed to be. So we're going to have to undo this board so we can get to underneath it. Oh, I do love these PCBs. Look how small they are. They're just so um, terse compared to the original ones. And that's because when Amstrad took over the ZX Spectrum, of course, had better custom chips. So I say better, I don't know. They've just consolidated more stuff on the design. I think that's enough. Indeed it is. And that's really the guy that we're looking for. So let's move this out of the way and get to work. So the first thing we need to do is actually remove this headset socket altogether. So flip it over onto its back apply a little heat and a little solder just to reactivate those old, old joints. You'll have flux in your solder you see and that will help. If you've got separate flux you can use that. And then just get your solder sucker, a bit of heat. Make sure you get nice clean suction. I didn't, I should have held it on there a little bit longer but that's okay. I'll work it. In fact, look at that, we're getting a lot here. These are some old school through hole components with loads of solder. One more round and it will be done. One more. And I think with that, I should be able to take it out. So I'm just going to push it a little bit because there's a tiny bit of solder still left on that. So I'm going to just apply a bit of pressure little bit of heat, little bit of pressure. Ow, it is hot. It's just, you can see it's on the verge of coming off there. It's just, oh, 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 there it is. Tiny bit more. And those holes are relatively clear, so we will be able to get to that. So you can see the headphone socket is off. Put it aside, don't lose it. And you'll see one of the problems is that they've actually connected the left and the right channel together. So the first thing we have to do is disconnect those two channels. And you can use a tool of your choice. I'm going to use this standard blade. Make sure you're cutting away from you. And you don't really need to do too much apart from get in there and yoink. In fact, that is probably good enough. You can see there's a nick between the two. But just belt and braces. I'm going to just break my own rule and come towards myself a tiny bit. So I've chopped that piece out all together and if I zoom in, oh, whoop, you can see that you've got a very clean break. Now we flip the board over. Right, we're flipped over. So what we're going to need to do is reconnect our headphone socket, which you can do, do it to your leisure. I just want to show you the main thing. There's a capacitor on the other side, this C200, you'll see it there, an electrolytic capacitor. What we want to do is connect to its leg and look here, study it. 
you can count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. I made a little arrow. That is now going to connect to our newly isolated earphone input. So if you can see what they did before, they had these both connected so that you'd have stereo sound output, which doesn't work anyway properly. So we're going to connect from there to there. First things first, the socket's shoved in. I'm just going to solder that back up so it's not going to go nowhere. And that's nice and easy. You don't really have to worry too much about that. You can't really mess it up. I'm just checking it's nice and even though. You don't want it to be wonk. It's not wonk. And if you're worried about it being wonk, you can hold your finger on it like this. Give it a little bit of pressure towards your face and then just touch those pins again and they'll just push up slightly. Now you're going to need some suitable wire. It doesn't really matter what you've got. I've got some Kynar but also I've got this regular wire so I'm just going to use some the regular wire and some dirty pliers just exactly like if you've got some stuff at home and you're not really fully decked out like most of us and you can see even I'm struggling a bit to get a bit of clean wire but I have. Now you're going to want to tin that so get your bit of solder and you can see I'm using super thick solder as well. I bought the wrong type and just put a little bit on the end. Just tin it nicely. You can see that's nicely tinned. It's actually sticking to that solder and then go to your place on the board. Hold that there and just a quick dab and they are joined. They are inseparable now. Now it's up to you how you want to route your wires. If you can go diagonally like that or do a nice little L shape and stick it to the board. I'm lazy, I'm going to do diagonally, I don't care. And make sure you cut off just enough because you don't want it too long but you don't want it too short because you can see now I've gone diagonally so I've got no scope for messing up. If I strip too much it could all be game over and then I'll have to get another piece of wire. So now we're ready, let's tin that one while we're there. See that's nicely tinned. I'm not soldering it there. I'm just I have to solder it here where we have the little arrow. So we've got a bit of tinning on there and you can see it's plenty long enough. And it's just going to touch that on there. Boom. Inseparable again and you can see that's what it looks like. So now you've got sound coming in if you're using the appropriate lead. Sound coming in now can go to that capacitor here and then that gets processed as into the ASIC and you can see all of this is actually hooked up near where the cassette tape is and that's no uh, surprise of course because we are basically hijacking this whole thing and if you did buzz it out you could see where that record pin goes and the record pin is that second pin down I'm just tracing that down to there which is the other side of this ceramic cap which looks like it's getting ever so close to this electrolytic area. We'd have to buzz it out to check, but you can see that's all going to be coming through the same stuff. That's fine. Put it back in the box. Do, 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 do. Look at that. It's nice. It's a nice little board, this. I have to admit, I um, didn't like Spectrums. I have a lot of trouble with Spectrums, but I have very little spec problem with the Amstrad Spectrums and it completely revises my view of Spectrum so Alan Sugar did a good thing I think. What type of Spectrum did you have? Did you have an Alan Sugar Spectrum or the rubber keyed monster? Or in my case the worst one which was the plastic keyed monster and that guy's still dead. I haven't managed to fix that one yet. So let's get the keyboard on. Now this is where you again have to play with this a little bit, but look, you can just do it on its end. It's not even a problem really, is it? Look. It must have been nice working in the Amstrad factory. They've made it so easy to do. Pop those in, and then you've got your tape connector, and then as you're rotating it, tape connector goes in. You can't see that, but it's, it has. And then the top is back on, give it a little wiggle, it's happy, put down your magazine or whatever, flip it over, you don't want to scrape it too much, and whack in your six, yes I counted them, six screws in the back and you're ready to try it out. As you can see this is a ZX Spectrum Plus 2 all plugged in again. I do have the audio coming from this laptop and the laptop has 
a ZX Spectrum program called WinTZX, which actually can play tape things. There's no tape at all in there, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is hit play in this piece of software. Oops, actually I have to push return here, don't I, first. And I'm going to push carriage return here, which will start the process. And you can hear we've got that lovely sound, lovely loader sound is coming through. And there you go, program depulsor, and away it goes.